Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to use our inverse trigonometric functions to find the missing angles. So what I did, though, is I have three, um, three triangles here. But I wanted to start off with two triangles that we can easily figure out what their side lengths are, as well as um, determine what their angles are. Now, I, the first two are what we call special right triangles. Now, this is a isosceles triangle. Um, and hopefully you know that isosceles triangles, if you have two um, congruent sides, then it means these two angles are also congruent. Since that's 90 degrees, you know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So 180 minus 90, then the rest of those two angles are equal to each other. We can identify these two angles as 45 degrees and 45 degrees. Now, knowing special right triangles or using the Pythagorean theorem, we can identify that my hypotenuse is the square root of 2. Again, use the Pythagorean theorem if you need. For this next one, um, what we notice is the short leg is half of what the long leg is. And what that actually is going to be is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is our right angle. Here is going to be my longer leg. So therefore, that length is 3 squared of 3. Again, the purpose of this video is not to talk about special right triangles. So if you're kind of a little bit lost, you can maybe just take it from me. Those are going to be the side lengths. And in reality, it doesn't even matter. I could just give you the problem with these lengths, and that would be perfectly OK for this video. OK, so if they didn't understand where I came from, just pretend, hey, the video's starting now. Let's figure out how to find the angles. Now, the reason why I chose these, these are just um, angles where I know the solutions are correct. And I want to kind of go again through what our trigonometric functions represent. So let's look at the tangent. The tangent of an angle theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And again, what we're doing, what that tangent of the function is doing, is it's comparing. So it's saying the tangent of an angle theta is equal to the comparison of the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. Now, what is our angle theta? Well, that kind of depends on what we want angle theta to be. So for these problems, I'm going to put this angle to be theta and this angle to be alpha. And I'm going to do that for all of these. But again, you could do theta could be anywhere you want it to be. Or you could use a different angle. You could use beta, right? You could use phi, sigma, whatever you want to do. OK. Um, so tangent theta equals the, compare, equals the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, let's look at it in this example here. Uh, the tangent of my opposite, so again, here is your right angle. Again, I tried to be simple so you guys can see that these are all going to be the same. So directly across from the right angle is our hypotenuse. If here's my theta, this is my adjacent side. That's my opposite. All right. So the opposite over the adjacent of my angle theta, which is 45 degrees, so tangent of 45, oops, hmm. Uh, OK, ba 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 da, 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 da. Think about this. Um, let's pretend, yeah, tangent of 45 degrees, tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over 1, which is just equal to 1. And again, we can verify that. Because if I plug in the tangent of 45 degrees in my calculator, now again, notice that my angles are in degrees. If I plug in the tangent of 45 degrees, that is equal to 1. My calculator verifies that. Now. I gave you guys this, right? And, you, and probably some of you that don't follow the special right triangles I did, you might be like, how the heck did you figure out 3 squared root of 3, right? Well, you could do the Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. But let's just pretend that's x. Let's say we don't know what that is. Besides using the Pythagorean theorem, what else could I do? Well, I could always use a ratio of my angles, right, from my angle in comparison with that x. So let's stick with the theta for this problem. And let's say, well, if I have tangent of theta, I know that's opposite over adjacent. Theta, in this case, is 30 degrees. So if I said tangent of theta is equal to 3 over x, because 3 is my opposite side, right, opposite, and x is my adjacent side. So therefore, I could solve for this. I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra, because I did this in another video. Multiply by x, divide by tangent. It's going to be 3 over Oops, the tangent of 30 degrees. I didn't write that in there. Tangent of 30 degrees. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, because if you just type in 3 divided by the tangent of 30 degrees, you're going to get a decimal. And I'll show you what that decimal is. It's 1.73. But I told you it was 3, 3 the square root of 3. And the difference, the reason why I use 3 squared root of 3 is because that's equal. That's exact, where this is going to be approximate. And if you type in your calculator 3 square root of 3, 
uh, 3 times the square root of 3, inverse tangent, tangent of 3 divided by tangent of 30 degrees. Uh-oh, I didn't get the right answer. What did I do here? 3, oh, I did 3 divided by tangent of 30 degrees. There you go. I typed in my calculator wrong. Sorry. That is going to be 5.196, right? Sorry about that. Well, anyways, that gives you what that value is, but that's approximate. So, you know, depending on where you are in your course, um, we'll learn how to get this exact value in later videos using the unit circle. Uh, but for right now, usually this approximation works. But again, so anyways, let's use this approximation. 5.196. Okay. That's great, right? But what if I didn't know what my 30 degrees was? What if I didn't know what theta was? Well, that's where our trigonometric functions come into play. Because if we don't know, actually, well, let's go over here. Actually, well, I'll, I'll prove it here. If we don't know what this angle is, let's say we were like, well, maybe our problem is not given our angle. Then what we can do is use our trigonometric functions to find that angle. So we're going to use the same process. I'm going to say tangent of, I don't know what the angle is, of theta is equal to. And again, this kind of comes back into why we're using approximation, but I'll show you. Uh, opposite over 5.196. Now, I need to solve for theta, but it's tangent of theta, right? So to undo the tangent function, what we're basically going to do is use the inverse function. So I'm basically going to say, I'm basically going to take the tan inverse on both of both sides. Therefore, what that gives us is theta is equal to the tangent inverse of 3 divided by 5.196. Now again, remember that 5.196 is an approximation. But if I type this in my calculator, where the tan inverse is right above the tangent, so I have to do second tan inverse of 3 divided by 5.196, I get 30.00072778. Now, you could, you know, when you round that, you get 30 degrees. But again, you see all those decimal points. So that's why I always you know, using the, the perfect or exact value is preferred. Remember, that was 3 squared of 2. So I, if I did inverse tangent of 3 divided by 3, Square root of 3. Close parenthesis. And I get exactly 3 divided by square root of 3. What did I do wrong here? Inverse tangent of 3 divided by 2 square root of 2. 3 divided by 3 times square root of 3. 30 degrees. There you go. Perfect. So I was just doing. So I still get 30 degrees exactly. Now, let's look at this case because we don't always have to use the inverse functions for tangent. We could use the inverse, we can use any inverse function. So for instance, um, let's say I want to find sine or theta, right? Well, theta, I could use sine or cosine. But you know what? I'm going to do everything from alpha here because I'm sick of using theta. So here's our hypotenuse. From alpha, the sine length that's between my um, 90 degree angle and my angle that I'm using is my adjacent side. And this is my hypotenuse. So if I want to figure out what alpha is, um, I can use whatever, you know, depends on what ratio I want to. I could say the sine of alpha is equal to the opposite. What the heck? Opposite. That's hypotenuse is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that is going to be 4 over 5. Therefore, say alpha equals sine inverse of 4 over 5. If I wanted to figure out um, theta, I, again, I can use basically any trigonometric function I want to. I could say the cosine of theta. So theta, though, now when we're dealing with theta, the sine lengths change, right? So now this is adjacent, and this is opposite. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 4 over 5. Notice how different angles that are actually exactly the same, which is something we'll get into later. So cosine inverse is cosine inverse of 4 over 5. 
All right, so now just to find those values to round this up, I'm just going to do sine inverse of 4 divided by 5. And that's going to give me approximate 53.13. And if I do cosine inverse of 4 divided by 5, that gives me 36. 0.87 approximately rounded. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how the basics of using the inverse function to find the missing angle of a, or the missing, yeah, the missing angle of a triangle. Thanks. Hello.